Welcome to our True Way Teen Bible Study. In this Bible study, we'll explore the story of Sodom and Gomorrah from Genesis chapter 18 verse 16 to 1929. We'll also look at Abraham's powerful example of prayer and the confidence we can have to approach God. You may download a free printable lesson pack on our website to follow along. Background to the passage. The cities of Sodom and Gomorrah, located in the southern region of the Jordan Rift Valley, are mentioned in the Bible as some of the most wicked cities ever to exist. According to Genesis chapter 18 verse 20, the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah is great, and their sin is very grave. In Genesis chapter 18 verses 22 to 33, Abraham pleads with God to spare Sodom from destruction. Despite their wickedness and sinfulness, he intercedes on behalf of the people who live there. Abraham also knew his nephew Lot, and his family lived in the wicked city. Abraham asks God to spare the city for fewer and fewer righteous people. God agreed to Abraham's plea, saying, for the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. However, a search proved unsuccessful as ten righteous people could not be found there. In Genesis chapter 19, the story of Sodom and Gomorrah is recounted in detail. The Lord sent two angels to investigate the city, confirming it is filled with sin and wickedness. God decided to destroy the cities, but first, he sent two angels to save Lot and his family. Key points. 1. God is the perfect judge Genesis chapter 18 verses 16 to 33. In Genesis chapter 18 verses 16 to 33, Abraham pleaded with God for mercy and asked him to spare the city. Abraham asks, Will not the judge of all the earth do right? 1822. Abraham knew that God was the ultimate judge of all the earth. Abraham recognized God's position as the sovereign ruler and believed he was a good God who always did what was right. The Bible explains that God is the ultimate judge and will always do what is right. In Psalm chapter 19 verse 9, we read, The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The rules of the Lord are true, and righteous altogether. Isaiah chapter 45 verse 21 also says, Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who has declared this from of old? Who has told it from that time? Have not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior, there is none besides me. God's justice is perfect, and he will always do what is right. We can trust him to make the right decisions and judgments in our lives because he knows all things. He sees what we cannot see and understands what we don't understand. Often, people will judge us unfairly and come to conclusions not based on facts or knowledge. Unfortunately, People judge us on things like the color of our skin or the clothes we wear. Even friends at school sometimes make snap judgments based on a few surface details when they don't really know who we are. We can be sure that God will judge according to his perfect standards of justice and righteousness, and we can rest assured knowing that he always does what is right, knowing all things. 2. Confidence to draw near to God in prayer, Genesis chapter 18 verse 23. Genesis chapter 18 verse 23 says, Then Abraham drew near the Lord and said. This scripture demonstrates how we can approach God in prayer. We have been given access to the throne room of heaven. What an amazing privilege. When we draw near to God, we must do so with a humble heart and attitude. The Bible says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. James chapter 4 verse 6. We should come before God in prayer with reverence and awe, recognizing the greatness of who he is. When Abraham drew near to the Lord and spoke, he did so with reverence and respect. Yet, he shows confidence in his relationship with the Lord and God's character by approaching him to speak. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 16 says because Jesus is our high priest, let us then with confidence draw near to the throne of grace, that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 12 says, because of Jesus and our faith in him, we can now come boldly and confidently into God's presence. Through Jesus, we can approach God as his children, knowing he will hear us and answer our prayers. Let us be confident that he hears us and will answer according to his perfect will. In the same way that Abraham prayed for Sodom and Lot, we, too, can and should intercede on behalf of others. 3. God's judgment and the world's reaction, Genesis chapter 19 verse 14. Genesis chapter 19 verse 14 says, So Lot went out and said to his sons-in-law, who were to marry his daughters, up. Get out of this place, for the Lord is about to destroy the city. But he seemed to his sons-in-law to be jesting. Sadly, the world continues to laugh and mock God's judgment of sin. Many people treat the Bible as fairy tales and downplay the weight of sins such as lying, cheating, stealing, and murder.
People think that God will never judge the world, therefore, they have free reign to do whatever they please. This idea is totally false. While it may appear in the moment that no one is watching or that there are no consequences for their actions, this could not be further from the truth. The Bible says that God is slow to anger, abounding in love. Matthew chapter 5 verse 45. It also says, Our Lord's patience gives people time to be saved. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 15. But the day will come when God judges sin, and when that day comes, there will be no escape. It is so important to seek forgiveness from the Lord and repent from our sins before it is too late. 4. Flee from sin, and don't look back. Genesis chapter 19 verse 26. The angels warned Lot and his family to flee the city of Sodom immediately. But Lot's wife looked back, and she turned into a pillar of salt. The Bible tells us to flee from sin and not look back. In a time when the world is filled with wickedness and evil, we must take it upon ourselves to turn away and resist temptations. We are called to flee from sin and must do so without hesitation and never look back. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 22 says, So flee youthful passions and pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace, along with those who call on the Lord from a pure heart. We must put our old life behind us when we follow Jesus. To live a life of faith, our memories and attachments to the sin of our past should be abandoned altogether. It is not helpful to look back at our former selves with nostalgia, instead, we should look to Jesus, who has saved us from our old ways and given us a new future. Conclusion The story of Lot and his family is an important reminder that we must flee from sin and never look back. We must resist temptations, examine our lives, and make decisions that bring us closer to God. The Bible tells us that God is slow to anger, abounding in love and mercy, yet he will judge the world eventually. Therefore, we must turn away from our wickedness and seek his mercy before it's too late.